On some mechanical keyboard forums recently, I've noticed that some people are asking for ISO keyboards or ANSI keyboards. We did some research, and in this video, we'll tell you all about what we learned. What are the differences between ANSI and ISO layouts on mechanical keyboards? So, let's get started. ANSI vs ISO layout. The Alt Graph key is available on ISO keyboards and allows the user to access the third symbol on a key. This is common in other languages. If there is a fourth symbol on the key, this is accessed by pressing Shift and Alt GR. The one key difference between the ANSI and ISO layouts exists in the left shift key. In ANSI keyboards, the left shift key is one large wide rectangular key. In ISO layouts, this shift key is broken into two different keys, making up that one key difference. Typically, this extra key will be the NLT and GT key. In fully programmed programmable keyboards. That extra button is what you make of it. It just allows you to fit another extra key, perhaps in a different language. It could be a symbol or something else. Disadvantages of an ISO layout. The enter key is far away. On an ISO layout, the backslash is closer, but this poses a problem such as the enter key being farther away from the home row. Your hands are commonly on the home row. In Nancy, with your pinky on the key, you only have to reach over one other key to press enter. On the ISO layout, your pinky must jump over two keys. This is a problem of ergonomics since this is a frequently used key. Does the backslash matter that much? So now the backslash is closer, but Delhi, the key is rarely used. I have only ever used it when doing programming when typing file paths in the command prompt or terminal window. With the enter key, we use that on a regular basis. Every time we start a new line when typing in a document, or when we're typing something in a search bar on Google or YouTube, we press that enter key quick. The left shift is far away. The left shift is split into two keys, which results in the left shift key being about one away from its typical position. The extra key could be greater slash less than symbols or backslash, depending on the language. These are not common keys. When I type and press my left shift, I press the right side. If IW is using an ISO keyboard, I would be accidentally pressing that extra key very often. Many people who come from countries that use an ISO layout often opt for an ANSI keyboard because they find themselves accidentally pressing that key of the backslash all too often when trying to press something else. Which is better, ANSI or ISO? The answer boils down to preference. As we can see from the above, there are many disadvantages to using an ISO layout keyboard. There are some languages that cannot be used without an ISO keyboard, typically in certain European countries. ISO keyboards make sacrifices in ergonomics to fit in an extra key that would be needed for that language. In fully programmable keyboards, getting an ANSI keyboard and then reprogramming it to fit all the keys needed for your language would be the most optimal. Alongside being more ergonomic, you also get access to so many more options for PCB, keycap sets, and more. Many group buys that offer ISO layouts do not hit the minimum funding needed to manufacture and distribute them. A quick Google search for ISO keycaps shows minimal results. Often, even if the group buy minimum limit is hit, the ISO keycap sets tend to be more expensive. Comparing two strong competitors is not just an easy task. However, we've done a little but choose according to your preferences. This video is just to help over the topic. Hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching till the end.